Tomorrow night, AEW will host the live Grand Slam edition of Dynamite, followed by a taped Rampage for Friday night. It's shaping up to be the best special edition of both shows from a wrestling sense, so much so that it feels like a top-tier pay-per-view. On top of the stacked card, AEW are set to break their attendance record, with 96% of the 19,400 tickets available having already been sold, with a sellout expected come showtime. So as is typically tradition with AEW pay-per-views, let's run through the card as I give my predictions for the AEW Grand Slam event in the Arthur Ashe Stadium. Much like we did with All Out, make sure you get your predictions in the comments down below and if you get every single match spot on, I'll give you a shout out in a future video. So let's start with Rampage and conclude with the ultimate dream match main event of Dynamite. The first match we will discuss is the women's division match between Anna Jay of the Dark Order, who is establishing herself as the authority of the group as it continues to fall apart. She'll be taking on Penelope Ford, who will likely be accompanied to ringside by the Bunny, who she has built an alliance with over the past few weeks. With Ty Conti there to balance things out, I expect a big win for Anna Jay to continue her path to a championship match, following a seven month absence due to a shoulder injury. The AEW Tag Team Champions will be in action as the Lucha Brothers team with fellow Latinos Santana and Ortiz, who came to the aid of the champs this past week following a beatdown at the hands of the Hardy family office. They'll be taken on members of the office with Matt Hardy's group being represented by Private Party and The Butcher and The Blade. For a result, I expect this to potentially set up a title match later down the line with one of the tag champions being pinned in the process. The Butcher and The Blade are top of the tag team ranking but they've just had a shot at the belts, which makes me think that one half of Private Party will get the pinfall over one of the Lucha Brothers to give the Hardy family office a much needed win, potentially earning a tag team title match in the process. Next, we will see Chris Jericho and Jake Hager of the Inner Circle taking on Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky, who go by the name of Men of the Year. Page and Sky recently aligned with Loudmouth Dan Lambert, founder of the American Top Team MMA Gym. I expect interference from Lambert's MMA trainees, perhaps to set up a clash with Hager, who is also an MMA fighter for Bellator. Lambert recently revealed that Junior Dos Santos, who often accompanies him to the ring in AEW, is interested in working a wrestling match with this potentially a way to set up his debut. I expect Jericho and Hager to win the match, but I think there will be some kind of post-match confrontation to set up the Santos versus Hager. With Rampage being a two-hour special this week, we still have three matches to go, and next up is the reunion of the Super Click, Adam Cole and the Young Bucks, who take on Christian Cage and the Jurassic Express. With the rumours of a trio's title being introduced for a while now, my gut tells me that this would explain the Young Bucks losing the tag titles at All Out, as to set up a trio's title run with Adam Cole. Therefore, my prediction for this one is that the Super Click will come out on top, as they establish themselves at the top of the trio's division. AEW recently filed for the Super Click trademark, which tells me they have big plans for the three men together going forward, with Adam Cole continuing his winning ways in his second match in AEW. Next, we have the match that will potentially main event the show, that being the Lights Out Tag Team match. Longtime friends and former enemies John Moxley and Eddie Kingston will team up against the reunited Suzuki Goon tag team of Minoru Suzuki and Lance Archer. I think the main question in this one is how much longer will Suzuki be around in AEW? He is booked for a number of US shows through to the end of October, with him set to work Bloodsport on the 22nd. With him set to remain stateside for the next month or so, I can see Suzuki coming away with the win here, redeeming Minoru's loss on Dynamite to John Moxley earlier this month. However, despite this fact, I've changed my mind and I'm going to go with a win for the homecoming boy Eddie Kingston and John Moxley, although I could easily see this going either way. And the final match listed for Rampage is CM Punk vs Powerhouse Hobbs in Punk's first television match since his return to wrestling after a seven year absence. His last match on broadcast TV was against Billy Gunn on Monday Night Raw 92 months ago, a match in which Punk came out on top. I expect him to win this one too, whilst elevating Hobbs in the process. This should be a fun match, with it being a complete role reversal from Punk's first encounter in AEW with Darby Allin, this time coming in with a power disadvantage. It's impossible to see Punk losing just yet, so I expect him to win this one, with it setting up a future bout with another member of Team Taz with Ricky Starks or Hook next in line. 
And quickly, just before we continue, make sure you drop a like on the video as it helps me out a lot and make sure you subscribe with notifications turned on so you don't miss any upcoming wrestling content as we head hopefully towards 100,000 subscribers. But now let's press play on the video. Now we move on to AEW Dynamite Grand Slam, which looks set to be the strongest AEW Dynamite to date. Sting will be in action as he teams with his protege Darby Allen to take on the old school throwback of FTR. The bout was set up after a post-match attack from FTR following Darby's win over Pinnacle member Sean Spears, which led to FTR disrespecting the icon by rubbing off his face paint. A struggle to see Sting and Darby losing this one, particularly with Allen coming off the back of a status-boosting feud with CM Punk. Therefore, I'll go with a win for the babyfaces, who could go on to establish themselves in the tag rankings by beating the team currently positioned in the number 5 spot. Next up is the extremely personal match between MJF and Brian Pillman Jr, who is on the path to becoming a bona fide single star. MJF has cut promos on multiple members of the Pillman family, including Brian's aunt Linda, his sister Brittany, and even his father, the late great Brian Pillman Sr. MJF's deep cutting heel antics have sparked a fire under the second generation wrestler, who is set for his biggest match to date. Despite the feud elevating Pillman Jr, it's hard to look past MJF, who returns to his native Long Island, New York, albeit 20 miles west of his hometown of Plainview. Whilst I'm tempted to call a Wardlow turn on MJF after recent hints that AEW are ready to pull the trigger, I think they'll hold off for now as MJF continues his supposed undefeated streak in AEW. Now we move on to the return of Cody Rhodes, who looks for redemption over the sinister Malachi Black. Black defeated Cody in his first ever AEW match, winning in a mere 4 minutes 42 seconds. Since then, Cody has been off television whilst Black has run through the rest of Cody's nightmare family. This one is pretty difficult to call, with it being hard to see Malachi picking up a loss anytime soon. However, with hints of a heel turn for Rhodes, I expect him to dig deep and do anything to win, whether that be through underhanded tactics or maybe through an interference from his friend Stephen Amell, who will be in attendance. So with this one, I'm gonna go bold and call a full-on double turn, as Cody turns heel with Malachi going full babyface in the process. Black is a top merchandise seller in the promotion and already gets cheered, so this switch won't be too difficult to pull off, especially considering Cody's growing interest in outside projects, which is causing friction with the fans. And next we go to the only title match of the night as the challenger and Casino Battle Royale winner Ruby Soho goes up against AEW Women's World Champion Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Soho has been shot out of a cannon straight to the top of the women's division, having debuted just over two weeks ago. After winning the Casino Battle Royale in her debut match, she is now on a free match undefeated streak and there's a good chance she will be crowned champion this Wednesday night. Britt's reign is heading into its fifth month and whilst this one is a hard one to call, I'm tempted to say that Soho's momentum will continue as she becomes AEW Women's World Champion within one month of debuting. Whilst a loss wouldn't hurt, she's currently the only wrestler in the division to match Brit's popularity, and I think a win in the Arthur Ashe Stadium could solidify her as one of the best female wrestlers in the world. It's a bold choice, but I'm gonna have to go with the runaway for this one, with a win for Ruby 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 Soho. And finally, we go to the main event of Dynamite for the ultimate dream match between Brian Danielson and AEW World Champion Kenny Omega. And yes, I'm pretty sure we're awake. Despite the champion being involved, the title is not in fact on the line due to the AEW ranking system, and this being Brian's first match in the promotion. Brian secured the match by calling out Omega directly to prove who is truly the best wrestler on the planet, a proposal that was originally rejected. The match was then made official this past Wednesday on Dynamite despite hesitation from Kenny's manager Don Callis, but the champion would eventually say yes. As for a prediction, it's fairly safe to say that Danielson will walk out of his first match in AEW with a win, which could potentially set up a title match down the line. This is a booking strategy often used in New Japan Pro Wrestling, when if the champion is pinned in the G1, New Japan Cup, or even a six-man tag match, a future title shot is rewarded. This could take place at AEW Full Gear in November, and I get the feeling we have a trilogy on our hands between two of the best to ever do it. And before you go, why not check out my video where I discuss 10 wrestlers that would be perfect members of the elite.